Growing up in two different worlds isn't easy, but not only did she do it effortlessly, she used her experiences to hone her craft and prepare for a future as a professional singer and performer. Her intense work ethic and positive attitude led to her immediate success upon her debut and also helped her overcome a very embarrassing moment that would have had many other artists throw in the towel. Let's find out whatever happened to Dominican-American pop singer Kat De Luna. Kat De Luna, born Kathleen Emperatrice De Luna, came into the world on November 26, 1987, in the Boogie Down Bronx, New York. Her parents decided to move back to their homeland, Bayawana, Dominican Republic, with Kat and her two younger sisters when she was just a toddler. While living there, she began singing around the age of three in talent shows and doing television performances. Shyness was never an issue for her as she felt very comfortable on stage. No me queda más que perderme en un abismo de tristeza y lágrimas. Maybe it's in the genes since both of her parents also sang when they were younger. Kat also began writing her own songs at age nine. She, her sisters, and her mother would return to the U.S. years later when her parents divorced. Financially, things were not good for the family. Kat's mother didn't speak English, so that limited her job options. Her mother did, however, have a talent for baking, so she started selling Dominican cakes in a local park. While her mother hustled to make a living for the family, Kat showcased her artistic skills by singing and dancing right alongside her as she worked. She would eventually gain some attention and land opening gigs, performing at local festivals in the New York and New Jersey area for other artists such as Puerto Rican singer La India and New Yorican salsa king Mark Anthony. By her early teens, Kat made the official decision that singing and performing would be her career. Her family settled in Newark, New Jersey upon their return to the country, and she opted to attend a high school specializing in visual and performing arts, where she would become a classically trained first soprano. At 15, she would enter a Coca-Cola-sponsored karaoke competition. She brought the house down and won, singing Whitney Houston's I Will Always Love You. She originally wanted to participate on the American version of the television show Pop Stars that would launch Nicole Scherzinger's career. However, she was too young at the time. She would then take matters into her own hands and go on to create an R&B girl group with people from her school. By 2006, Cad had left the group to pursue a solo career and shortly after signed a deal with Epic Records. In May 2007, the 19-year-old dropped her debut single called Wine Up. The catchy reggae fusion track also features dancehall artist Elephant Man and showcases Kat singing back and forth between English and Spanish. She even raps on the song, and it's so forceful and authentic that many publications have mistakenly credited Puerto Rican singer Evie Queen as the source. It would peak at the number 29 position on the Billboard Hot 100 chart, go all the way to number one on the Dance Club chart, and become her biggest hit to date. Fun fact, the first time she heard the song on the radio, she jumped out of the car she was in, almost getting hit twice, and stopped everyone passing by to tell them that she was an artist and that it was her song playing. Her debut album titled Nine Lives dropped that summer. The title represents the number of record labels that turned her down before she got her deal with Epic. The project helmed by super producer Red One also released two second singles, a US exclusive called Am I Dreaming, which didn't do very well, and Run the Show, an international release that received considerable airplay and had great success on the charts in several countries. In fact, the experience of touring overseas would gain Kat a lot of career success and help her find new inspiration. She started right after Why Not blew up and she was shocked by the reception. She spoke about it in an interview with Remezcla.com in 2017 saying, 
people in France knew every single word to the rap part in Spanish. I feel like traveling and touring is really where I grew up and matured. I've done a lot of shows in countries that other people won't do, and a lot of people say, why would you go there? But I think it's not about me, it's about inspiring other people. In 2010, she landed the number one spot on a Billboard magazine top 10 list. But it's not for what you would think. Two years prior, in September 2008, Kat sang the Star Spangled Banner at a Dallas Cowboys Philadelphia Eagles Monday Night Football game. She struggled to remember the words and complete shaky runs. Then she received a scathing round of boos before leaving the field. She spoke to radio host Shay Diddy from 106.1 KMEL in 2015 about what really happened. I was going through a lot yeah. <laughs> around that time. Vocally, I was going through a lot right, from right. one plane to the other one, strep throat out. You oh, know, no. <clears throat> that was the thing that day. Honestly, I would have to say as a vocalist, you know, because mm -hmm. I, I just looked at it as a vocalist. Um, I was not on my A game. I should have never done the the performance that day. Mm -hmm. And then on the mid stage, right in the middle, my in-ears turn off. Oh, nice. That's why at one point I was like, and I could not hear myself at all. So then that's when I messed up that note. But then it happens. By late 2008, a third single from her album called In the End was released internationally. The song ended up being her first to not be released at all in the U.S., and as a result of a lack of promotion, it barely made a dent on the charts. Subsequently, Kat was dropped from Epic Records, but in the blink of an eye, she inked a new deal with Universal Motown. Before the year came to an end, she would begin work on her second album and drop a new single on her MySpace page and official website. Kat would go through many ups and downs over nearly two years before her follow-up album would be released. At the top of the year, she released Unstoppable, featuring rapper Lil Wayne in January 2009. It was slated to be the first single off her album, but that plan was canceled. The following month, the digital-only promotion track, Dance Bailalo, dropped. It's a little odd that the hard-hitting dance track never ended up on the album, since it did receive a positive reception. The track that would end up being the lead single for her album, called Push Push, featuring Senegalese American singer Akon, was released that spring. The single had great commercial success internationally, mostly in Belgium and France. Later in the year, possibly due to Kat's increasing success overseas, she signed a new contract with Universal Music Belgium. The second single called Party O'Clock dropped on iTunes one month before the album release date. The track stirred up some controversy several months later when triple threat superstar Jennifer Lopez's song On the Floor hit the airwaves. Cat's fans, as well as critics, claimed the song plagiarized Party O'Clock. Kat spoke to New York hip-hop radio station Hot 97's Jennifer Lay, also known as Jen from Brooklyn, in 2016 about how the media made it a much bigger deal than it was. Nothing like that ever had happened to me. So I feel like when that happened, I didn't understand it at first. It just came out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. So it was the media. I mean, I'm a huge fan of J-Lo. How could I ever say anything negative about her? Mm -hmm. Like her, Gloria Estefan, you know, they were women pioneers. For me as a Latino American, they opened the doors for us. So, you know, it was just a lot of them saying, and then I said, I'm like, I didn't say nothing. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, we work with the same producer mm -hmm. um, who was Red One, who was amazing, and it just, it just so happened maybe our songs were alike, you know, but it, who knows. Kat's sophomore album was finally released on November 5th, 2010 in Belgium. Two other versions were also released in France and Japan the following year, as well as three more singles, including Dance Tonight, which, following in the footsteps of Wine Up, went to number one on the Dance Club chart. The album would not be released in the U.S. since she was planning to do a separate second album exclusively for her American fans titled Viva Out Loud, but that never happened. 
Cat actually wouldn't put out another album for six years, but the music never stopped. She would continue to release singles on iTunes and her official YouTube channel. Several of the tracks, including Wanna See You Dance, Bum Bum featuring panty drop-in R&B singer Trey Songs, and Spanish language Sobredosis, were included on her third album titled Loading, released in the summer of 2016. The compilation album also includes four new songs, including the single What a Night, featuring American R&B singer Jeremiah. Kat picked up the pace again two years later, releasing her first Latin trap song, Nueva Actitude, featuring fellow straight out of New York Dominican-American singer Arcangel at the end of 2018. Her two newest tracks to date, called Last Night in Miami and Only One, were released in the summer of 2019. Kat's talents and interests don't just stop at music. She's also a big candle lover and even makes her own from time to time. Cooking is another passion that fans can see her showcase on her official YouTube channel. On February 3rd, 2021, Kat posted a message on Instagram that she had tested positive for COVID-19 three weeks prior. Gracias a Dios, it turned out to be a mild case that she recovered from quickly. And not too long after, she was back doing what she does best. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and comment. Also, don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notifications so you won't miss any future videos. See you next time.